Okay, let's jump right into the, the part of the slideshow that begins to tell the story of the myth of Prometheus. And again, we're going to think about the question of suffering, why we suffer, uh, what is the meaning of suffering, and how the suffering of Prometheus relates to the education or development of Circe in Miller's novel and to the struggle or a homecoming of Odysseus in Homer's poem. Okay. So I'm going to start viewing the slideshow. <clears throat> and recall, this is the moment, this is a later European painting of the moment that Zeus comes down from the sky <laughs> with his allies, his brothers, Poseidon, and everyone who has allied themselves with Zeus, right, the children of Kronos, they are all opposed to their father because, recall, he, out of fear of the prophecy that they would destroy him, he has been eating his children. And recall again that Rhea, the wife of Kronos, the sort of second mother goddess figure in Greek mythology, to protect her children, sends Zeus away to the island of Crete, an older civilization, right? Cretan civilization is older than Mycenaean Greek civilization. So uh, it's an island in the Mediterranean, and one of the earliest civilizations formed there. We don't know that much about the Cretan culture. We know a lot more about Mycenaean and later Greek culture. But we do have some artifacts from the island of Crete to, to show us some things about what they believed. And, and um, in any case, Zeus grows up there as a child and meanwhile, uh, right, Kronos had swallowed a rock instead of his son Zeus. So inside of Kronos are all of his children except Zeus and a rock. Uh, once Zeus comes of age, right, so you can imagine Zeus growing up on the island of Crete, kind of the way that Telemachus is growing up on the island of Ithaca, except that Zeus has mentors, right? Uh, what Telemachus lacks at the beginning of Homer's Odyssey is a mentor. This is one of the reasons why Athena comes down disguised as mentor, right? That's where we get the idea, sorry, that's where we get the word mentor uh, from this Greek story of Athena mentoring um, um, uh, Telemachus. Actually, she, she, she becomes, uh, uh, she takes on the appearance of his father's friend, mentor. Uh -uh. Um, but Zeus, having been mentored on the island of Crete, he returns to, um, his father's domain, and here's an image of Zeus and his and his allies defeating Cronus and 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 many of the Titans. Uh, now, now this story, or the, this part of the story, is told in chapter two of Miller's novel. If you turn to page fifteen, right um, after she introduces Prometheus, right after Circe uh, um, sort of. Um, gets word that Prometheus is going to be in her house and subjected to great suffering <clears throat> or punishment. Uh, Miller retells the story, um, or I don't know, you can think of Circe as telling the story, right? Circe is kind of the, the, the story is told here from the point of view of Circe. So here she is repeating, uh, the narrator is repeating the story or retelling the story of this clash between the Olympians and the Titans. There had only been Titans once at the bottom of page 14, at the dawning of the world. And then my great uncle Kronos had heard a prophecy that his child would one day overthrow him. This is at the top of page 15 of Miller's novel. When his wife Rhea birthed her first babe, he tore it damp from her arms and swallowed it whole. Four more children were born and he ate them all the same until at last in desperation, Rhea swaddled a stone and gave it to him to swallow instead. Kronos was deceived. Right, this is an act of deception on behalf of the children. And the rescued baby Zeus was taken to Mount Dicte to be raised in secret. That's a mountain on the island of Crete. When he was grown, he rose up indeed, plucking the thunderbolt from the sky. Right, um, actually, he was given it by the Cyclops, right? but he takes the thunderbolt with the help of the, of the Cyclops and forcing poisonous herbs down his father's throat. Right, so this is a part of the story I didn't tell last week. Right? And there are many different versions of this tale. This, I think, comes from Hesiod. Right? This is Miller's retelling of Hesiod's version of the story. But there are other versions. 
But in this version, in Hesiod's version, um, Zeus has the power of pharmaca, these herbs. <clears throat> and he uses the herbs, these poisonous herbs, to get his father to throw up all of his brothers, right? So he gives his father the herbs and he throws up the rock and all of the other children that he swallowed and sisters. They sprang to their brother's side, naming themselves Olympians, right? So this is the moment at which the, the generation after Kronos, right? They become the Olympians. They identify with the mountain where they set their throne after defeating their father. So this is an image of the battle, but after this battle, the Olympians settle on the mountain of Olympus, which is uh, actually in Greece, and they they identify as the generation of gods who have overtaken uh, the, the 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 patriarchal rule of Kronos and 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 the Titans. Although many of the Titans side with Zeus and the Olympians, for example, Helios and Oceanus, right, uh, the sun and the ocean, interestingly, right, side with the Olympians, and those those are powerful allies, right. Zeus has the sun on his side and the ocean on his side, and the power of the sun and the ocean on his side. But many of the other uh, titans um, oppose themselves to Zeus, including the father of Prometheus and Prometheus himself, right? Who is uh, uh, of the same generation as Zeus, right? He's the same age as Zeus, right? He's the, the son of, his, of, 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 of an older titan, right? But... Um, but um, Prometheus, even though he comes into the world at the same time as Zeus, he opposes himself to Zeus. He does not identify with the Olympians, with the god of the Olympians. Right? Um, okay, so, but so uh, then she goes on to tell the story. The old gods divided themselves, many through their strength to Kronos, right? But my father and grandfather joined Zeus. And she talks about how, you know, the, the power is now sort of transferred, right? There's a transfer of power. So, in the old days, right, her uncle Nereus was the ruler of the sea, but now Poseidon, right, Zeus's brother, uh, becomes the new god of the sea, and he is important in the story that Homer tells, right, it's the Olympian god Poseidon, not the older gods of the sea who oppose Odysseus's homecoming because of what he does to the Polyphemus, the Cyclops. Uh, and it's not told here, but one of one of the uh, one of the Cyclops, not Polyphemus, is responsible for helping Zeus defeat the, the 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 Titans here by giving him or helping him gain control of the thunderbolt. <clears throat> um, right. We also have a reference to Proteus, right, the the old man of the sea, another sort of sea god from Egypt, um, who you know Menelaus in Book Four of Homer's Odyssey encounters Proteus on his struggle on his homecoming. And he has to subdue Proteus. But here we have the story of how um, Proteus sort of lost some of his power, lost his palace. His wives were taken as slaves after the rise of Zeus. So the gods who oppose Zeus, right, they lose some of their power, right, and they become demoted. Um, and this leads to kind of resentment, right? The Titans sneered, right? <clears throat> um, you know, um, uh, and and they, they craved to have the power that they lost. Uh, of course, Helios, the son, and the grandfather, Oceanus, did not get demoted. They didn't, their powers were not diminished. Their, their place in the, in the world did not change. Um, but uh, the Titans who, who sided with them, who sided with Zeus, they are still kind of resentful. But interestingly, Helios seems to be the one who, and Oceanus seems to be the ones who are patient. Right? They're waiting for the day when they can restore their place. Well, they haven't really fully lost their place, but they are still, they, they technically are subservient to Zeus. And they're waiting for the day maybe where Zeus will be over, overthrown and the old order of things will be restored. Right? Whereas many of the other Titans are anxious to kind of, um, to, 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 I don't know, um, confront Zeus. And Prometheus is, is an example. Okay, of uh, a god who is willing to confront Zeus in a way that Helios and Oceanus are not. Okay, so <clears throat> um, let's shift. So Zeus, uh, we'll come back to, to, to Miller's novel, but that's the passage in chapter two. Before we actually meet Prometheus, we have the retelling of the story of the clash between the Olympians and the Titans and how Zeus rose to power. And here's an ancient Greek sculpture of Zeus who sees himself 
as the father of the gods, right? He's not literally the father of the gods. He he sub, he subdued and defeated his own father, right? <clears throat> but he now takes on the mantle of the ruler of the gods, right? Um, and tries to embody the, the sort of the form of the patriarch. He also sees himself as the father and the ruler of men, of mankind. Even though in many of the stories he doesn't do the labor of creating us, right? That's left to uh, Prometheus and his brother Epithemus. So Prometheus and his brother Prometheus means forethought, right? He is the god of forethought, and his brother Epithemus is the god of afterthought, and they are both tasked by Zeus, right, with the job of of, of making animals and humans. Um, ultimately, are, are 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 the kind of the end product of their project of making animals to populate the earth, right? Um, Zeus sort of takes credit for this, though. He sees himself as the father of mankind, um, even though he didn't do all the hard work. <laughs> um, here he is with his aegis, that kind of shield, and that is a symbol of his power. This is an old coin, right, with a symbol of, of Zeus uh, holding his thunderbolt and uh, the, the aegis or the, the, the shield this, again, these are symbols of his power. At the bottom is the eagle. We can see that the, the eagle, another symbol of Zeus's power. Right? And so the coins, this was, you know, this is, we have George Washington on our coins, right? The ancient Greeks uh, had images of Zeus. <clears throat> it's a symbol of power. But here's, here is Prometheus, okay? So um, I don't want to run out. Okay, we have a few more minutes in this part of the, of the slideshow. Uh, so this is a later painting of Prometheus, and this is his great act of defiance. Prometheus is the one, of all the titans, he is the one who is willing to stand up to Zeus's authority. Um, Zeus has hidden fire from mankind. He doesn't want mankind to develop uh, the, all of the tools and all of the means of survival that fire gives them. He wants their life to be a kind of struggle. He doesn't want things to be too comfortable for the human. He wants them to work hard. Um, and so he and, and he's afraid of what fire will bring to the human being, bring to human kind, and so he hides it from us. Prometheus sees this as a kind of injustice and a kind of abuse of power, and he sees himself as a kind of balance, a balance between the power of mankind and the power of Zeus, right? Or a balance between the power of the Olympians and the power of the Titans. Okay, he sort of likes to sort of stick it to Zeus. In, in this is not the only way that he does that. Uh, um, he, tricks, he tricks and deceives Zeus in a number of different ways, but it, always for a purpose. And here in his purpose is not just to kind of be a trickster, but to help us. Prometheus is on our side. He's not on the side of Zeus and the Olympians. So here he is stealing fire. This is an image of us sort of sleeping before we are, uh, before we are awakened by the power of fire, okay, however you want to understand that metaphor. Um, here's another um, image, later painting, of Prometheus giving fire to man, okay, um, and there is Athena behind him. And so Athena is uh, represented as the goddess who helped Prometheus kind of create man in some sense, right? So again, Zeus kind of takes the credit for being the father of mankind, but it's actually Prometheus and Athena who do the work of bringing man into the civilized state that he is in now, right, by giving him fire, right, in that sense, by creating man. Um, okay, just one more slide and then we'll pause for the next video. Um, and so here again, here's another painting then of Athena bestowing reason and understanding on mankind while Prometheus watches. So Prometheus has given man fire, Right? And you can think about what that symbolizes, what kind of a gift that is. Athena is, has given the gift of reason and understanding. Right? And this distinguishes mankind from the other animals. Again, you can go back to Gilgamesh and thinking about right, how Enkidu becomes fully human. Right? For the Greeks, right, the, the human animal becomes fully human the moment that the, it, reason and understanding dawns on the human. Right? Um, and this, this is part of the story of, of, of the Promethean origin of man, right? Um, reason and understanding, right, um, is the origin of, of human civilization, along with the sort of the gift of fire, right? These two gifts make us what we are. Okay, so uh, this is all for now. Be back in a minute.